Hi guys, welcome back to the Tech Chap, and this is the brand new iPad Pro 9.7. Actually, no, hang on. Sorry, no, that's the original Air. That's not the right one. Uh, yeah, this is the brand new iPad Pro 9.7. You can tell because it's got the four speed. Sorry, no, again. Yeah, that's the that's the Air 2. No, it's not that one. Uh, third time lucky. Yep. Okay, this is the brand new iPad Pro 9.7. You can tell because it's got the four speakers at the top and the bottom. And, um, uh,. But while I'm just joking around, there is a legitimate question about how much has actually really changed since the two and a half years since the original iPad Air came out. If you already own an iPad, is it worth upgrading? If you don't own one, is it worth buying the latest one? I'm gonna try and find out in my full review of the brand new iPad Pro 9.7. Is this one, I promise. So instead of the iPad Air 3, we get the iPad Pro 9.7, the smaller brother of the 12.9 inch iPad Pro which came out back in November 2015. But while it may be a rebranded, for all intents and purposes, this is the iPad Air 3. So what's new? We've got an improved display, a faster dual core A9X processor, quad speakers which sound great, significantly improved cameras with a 12 megapixel rear uh, capable of 4K video recording and a 5 megapixel front. It's also got a brand new connector which supports the iPad smart keyboard as well as support for Apple. Apple's pencil. What hasn't changed though is the design. The Pro 9.7 weighs 437 grams and is 6.1 millimeters thick. That's exactly the same as the iPad Air 2, but it is noticeably thinner and lighter than the original Air. So the new Pro represents both a step up in terms of performance and design for the original Air owners, but if you already own the Air 2, uh, there's definitely less reasons to upgrade. But what about the iPad Pro 12.9? How does it compare to its bigger brother? Well, while it shares many of the same features, including the fantastic quad speakers, the processor, the support for accessories, for some reason, Apple decided to only give the 9.7 inch Pro two gigabytes of RAM compared to four on the larger model. You can find a speed test between the two iPad Pros by clicking on the card, I think, in the top right corner. But long story short, even though there is about a five to 10% difference in benchmarks, in reality, there's no significant difference between the two different Pros. Despite the Pro 9.7 having a slightly lower clock speed but what does make a difference is the RAM when jumping back to recently used apps the 9.7 inch Pro has to restart and relaunch them far more often than the larger Pro which can just instantly resume them so essentially the extra RAM allows the bigger iPad Pro to keep more apps running in the background so despite coming under the same Pro branding and supporting the same productivity accessories, Apple for whatever reason decided the Pro 9.7 didn't need 4GB of RAM. But what the newer, smaller Pro does offer though is an improved display. It's the only iPad that features the brand new True Tone technology that adjusts the display brightness and color temperature to suit the ambient lighting around you. It's basically a more advanced night mode. It tends to make the screen look quite a bit warmer, but if you're not a fan of it, you can always just turn it off. Speaking of the screen, it has the same 9.7 inch 2048 by 1536 resolution display as the original iPad, which came out over two and a half years ago. But while the size and the res may be the same, the new 9.7 Pro is 25% brighter than the Air 2 and has a wider color gamma, which means it has a greater range of colors and they're more accurate as well. But the most noticeable improvement to the new iPad is the new anti-reflective screen coating, which makes it much easier to see in bright sunlight or if there's a strong light source behind you. Compared to the Air and the Air 2, which sometimes can become almost unusable in bright sunshine, the Pro's display is a huge improvement. Now we talked about the A9X chip earlier when we compared it to its bigger brother, the 12.9 inch Pro. But put simply, the processing speed, the performance in the new Pro 9.7 is a huge step up over the original Air, which took three times longer to boot up and in some games would take 10 to 15 seconds longer to load. But compared to the Air 2, it's a lot harder to recommend. It's, there is a noticeable speed difference side by side, as I say. Uh, there's even a little bit of an improvement in the Touch ID responsiveness. But unless you're a power user uh, and often use intensive games and apps, maybe some CAD uh, design apps or graphically demanding games, it's not really worth upgrading for the performance increase alone in my opinion. But what might be worth upgrading for though is the Pro support for accessories like the Apple Smart Keyboard and Apple Pencil. Apple's trying to convince us that the latest iPads are laptop replacements and while I don't really think that is the case, at least not until iOS and macOS merge or we get full desktop apps on the iPad, the Apple Pencil is a great little tool for aspiring artists, creative and those who just enjoy doodling and messing around. The Smart Keyboard as well is pretty handy to have although you could always just dock one of the old iPad's third party keyboards that connect over Bluetooth if you wanted to. Really it's difficult to pinpoint the Pro's one feature that makes it a must have over the Air 2. The 12.9 inch model had the extra screen real estate, it's got the RAM advantage, but this one just feels like a slight evolution to the Air 2. A bit faster, a slightly nicer screen, access to uh, more Apple peripherals, basically just a refinement rather than a revolution. 
Even the battery life hasn't changed. Apple claims you'll get 10 hours of web browsing or uh, video watching or listening to music over Wi-Fi. That's the same as the Air and the Air 2. But I suppose it's good to see that you know there's been no compromise despite the fact that there is a significantly pow more powerful chip inside. What I would like to have seen though is some sort of fast charging uh, technology. The iPad Pro takes about four hours to fully recharge. It's not the slowest in the world, but I guess I've been spoiled by my Android phones with quick charge. But no iPad Pro 9.7 review is complete without talking about the brand new camera. In terms of spec, it's basically the same one that's used in the iPhone 6S, which means really is incredible. It's the best camera on any tablet and the vast majority of phones too, to be honest. The rear camera is 12 megapixels up from eight on the Air 2. It records up to 4K video and has a dedicated flash, which is a first for an iPad. Pictures and videos look great, colors are vibrant, there's tons of detail, and it does a pretty good job in low light as well. But regardless of whether you plan to use it or not, it is a big upgrade and a welcome improvement to the pretty mediocre camera on the Air 2. But for me, more importantly, it's the front camera that's been upgraded to five megapixels up from 1.2, which makes making FaceTime calls and Skype video calls much higher quality. But like the iPhone 6S camera, it does also protrude from the back of the tablet. But if you're worried it might make the iPad wobble if it's set down on a flat surface or a desk, don't worry, it doesn't. There's no wobble or movement at all. Now, a final thing to mention is if you already own an iPad and a smart cover, the iPad Pro's got a slightly different placement of the magnets. So basically, if you do use an old smart cover on the new tablet, uh, the end just flicks up a little bit, which isn't great. So if you do like using your iPad with a smart cover, unfortunately, you're gonna have to go out and buy a new one. I think that's really the biggest issue with a new iPad. The base price is £499 or $599 uh, for the Wi-Fi 32 gigabyte option. And I think 32 gigabytes is fine in terms of storage. I've never found myself uh, wishing I had more space, although there is a 128 and 256 gigabyte options as well if you fancy going higher. But if you do, let's say, go for the 32 gigabyte option and you want a smart cover, that's uh, another 40 quid or 50 bucks. Perhaps you're upgrading from an older iPad or buying a new one to take advantage of some of the Pro's features, such as the support for Apple Pencil and the keyboard. If we add those accessories in as well, we're looking at about 750 quid or 850 bucks. But of course you don't need to buy any of the extras, but part of the selling point of the new Pro 9.7 is the fact that the, it does support these accessories. So if you don't plan to buy them, it kind of makes more sense perhaps just to buy the Air 2 and save yourself a fair bit of money. But if you do fancy yourself a new iPad Pro, you can get it in silver, gold, space gray, or for the first time, uh, rose gold. It's also available in Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi plus cellular options. I rebel. We have a mission for you. A major weapons test is imminent. So let's get down to brass tacks. In my opinion, if you already own an original iPad Air or earlier, it is definitely worth upgrading. You're uh, trading in your old one and buying the new one. You're benefiting not just from the better performance, but also the display, the touch ID, the cameras, but most importantly as well, the design It's thinner and lighter than the Air or earlier. But if you own the iPad Air 2, which has the exact same design and is already incredibly fast and responsive, while the new less reflective screen on the Pro is nice, and unless you really want to use the Apple Pencil or Smart Keyboard, I think it's your best bet to wait another year. Personally though, if I didn't own an iPad and I really wanted one, I would probably just buy the Bullet and buy the Pro. You never know if you'll want the accessories in the future. The speakers are much better. And if you give the extras and accessories a miss to start with, it doesn't have to be ludicrously expensive. So I hope you found this review of the new iPad Pro 9.7 helpful. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. Would you buy one? And do you think it's worth upgrading uh, to from the Air or the Air 2? Thanks very much for watching guys. Please do like, share and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. And hopefully I'll see you again right here on the Tech Chat.